Number five on this list is Shams al Marif. This book, from my findings, is not inherently evil in its teachings, but is one of those examples of potentially being a bit too much power for one person to possess. It's a 13th century Arabic grimoire written by Ahmed al Buni. The book attempts to teach its readers how to perform ancient Arabic magic and is very spiritualistic. This book was super influential in Arabic culture and gained a large following. Many good things have come from this book, but also when you have a large amount of people following anything, some take it too far. Wikipedia writes, in contemporary form, the book consists of two volumes, Shams al-Marif al-Kubra and Shams al-Marif al-Sugra, the former being the larger of the two. The first few chapters introduce the reader to magic squares and the combination of numbers and the alphabet that are believed to bring magical effect, which the author insists is the only way to communicate with jinn, angels, and spirits. And that right there is one of the main teachings in this book, the ability to talk to spirits. The amount of scary stories that we've talked about on this channel though, in regards to people trying to communicate with the dead is crazy, and it shows just how often things like this can go wrong. This has obviously happened many a time with this book, and those trying to reach their departed loved one end up contacting a super dangerous demon. I don't think that there's anything morally wrong with contacting the dead, if the dead are okay with it of course, but it seems like doing this always ends up with something bad happening. This grimoire won't curse you just by simply reading it, but if you try and perform some of the rituals it suggests, then it's very likely that you could cause some serious harm to you or those that you love. I recommend just avoiding this book altogether. Number four on this list is De Varmi Mystery. Now the book in question here is actually a fictional book, and therefore it would be actually impossible for you to read it anyways, even if you wanted to for some reason. But that being said, it doesn't change the fact that it's definitely cursed and extremely evil. If this book was real, then we would need to get rid of it as soon as possible because it teaches humans how to do some very dangerous things. The book is part of the Lovecraftian universe and made its first appearance in The Secret of the tomb. The book isn't referenced too much in that story, but it's described in pretty good detail in the story The Black Bargain. In that book, it describes Devami Masai as something that told you how you could compound asinite and belladonna and draw circles of phosphorescent fire on the floor when the stars were right. Something that spoke of melting tallow candles and blending them with corpse fat, whispered of the uses to which animal sacrifices might be put. It spoke of meetings that could be arranged with various parties, most most people don't even believe in, with cold, deliberate directions for traffic with ancient evil. Drawing circles of fire, sacrificing animals, talking with ancient evil, this all sounds like pretty bad news to me. Especially the part that says you can arrange meetings with various parties. It's clear that not only can this book teach someone how to perform any number of spells and incantations, but some of those spells will deal with the summoning of ancient demons and creatures. And if we assume that this book is real and can be read, then that would also mean that the terrifyingly powerful gods Lovecraft wrote about would also be real. Meaning that this book could grant you the ability to summon Cthulhu or something even worse. Summoning your standard demon is already bad enough, but an all-knowing, super powerful god definitely raises the stakes a little bit. This book, from every description I can read about, sounds like something that's just far too dangerous for any human to use and wield safely. If it ever was real and you did happen to stumble upon it, best to avoid reading it at all costs. Number three on this list is the Book of Abramelin. Abraham was an Egyptian mage who lived between 1362 and 1458 and dedicated his life to magic. Once Abraham visited Egypt and there he met a magician, not that magician which you see on TV shows, but that who really knows dark magic and dark secrets. He told Abraham many dark and mysterious secrets and strange things which you and I can never imagine. He told him how to live the dead person, the location of under earth treasures, how to contact devils. Besides this, he also told him the secrets of becoming invisible and flying in the sky. That last passage that I just read was written by Sharik Kamal while he was listing the most cursed books of all time. This book is known to be dangerous and it isn't just because of the contents in it either. Yes, summoning the dead and performing dark magic in its own right is very dangerous and has the potential to cause serious problems for you and those around you. This book though may just be inherently cursed to begin with. Many people who have read this book, even those who don't go on to perform any of the rituals or incantations that the book describes, have gotten horribly bad luck afterwards. Like the second they opened up the book and started reading, their entire life just 
flipped on its side. Some have said that afterwards their home became haunted by some dark spirit and they had to move. It's almost as if the book itself is a portal to another demonic dimension and just the action of opening it could cause something to leak out. I'm sure that Abraham was a great writer, but no book is worth dying over, so I won't be reading this one anytime soon. Number two on this list is The Great Omar. This book is believed to be the cause of one of the most tragic disasters in all of human history, sinking the unsinkable ship, the Titanic. No, you don't catch Leonardo DiCaprio reading this book in the 1997 movie version, but maybe he should have. This book, even though it is deeply cursed, is potentially the most ornate and beautiful books to have ever been created. In fact, it took over 2,500 hours to create this book, which translates to over 100 full days. One would think that a book of this kind would fetch quite the pretty penny, but that actually wasn't the case. In fact, the man who binded this book, Francis Sangorski, had an extremely hard time trying to sell it to anyone. Finally, he did find a home for it in America and was in the process of sending it over there. But it never reached its destination though because it was on the Titanic. Now the reason that people think this book had something to do with the unsinkable ship sinking is because only a week or so after the ship had gone down, so did Sangorski. He died by drowning to death a very short time after the book had also sunk to the bottom of the ocean. This is why people believe that something about this book will curse those around it and potentially lead to someone drowning. I personally think it's a bit of a stretch to just assume that having this book caused the entire Titanic to sink. However, it is a remarkable coincidence what happened to Sangorski. It probably won't ever happen, but if this book ever did wash ashore one day, I wouldn't want to be the one to pick it up first. Number one on this list is The Book of Soiga. The Book of Soiga is one of the most complete collections of magic and dark magic that one could come across. Wikipedia writes, amongst the incantations and instructions on magic, astrology, demonology, lists of conjunctions, lunar mansions, and names of genealogies of angels, the book contains 36 large squares of letters which D was unable to decipher. Otherwise un known medieval magical treaties are cited including works known as the Liber E, Liber O's, Liber Dignus, Liber Sipple, and Liber Muno. So we'll get to those letters in a second because those play into the cursed nature of this book, but even without those, we're still dealing with a book that goes into depth on some pretty dangerous topics. The one that jumps off the page to me as being potentially problematic is demonology. The study of demons and the hierarchy to them and also the study of how to potentially summon them. This is certainly problematic and already a reason to not read this book, but let's get back to those letters. In 1608, there lived a man named John D. John D was fascinated with this book and wanted to figure out how to decode the letters. He reached out to the angel Uriel, and Uriel told him that only the worthy one will be able to crack the code. Truly a chosen one scenario where the book will reveal its secrets to the one that it decides. John D tried to decode it anyways, but then a grim fate befell him and he died. Then, very mysteriously, the book disappeared from the face of the earth for almost 400 years, until it all of a sudden reappeared in 1994. Now, it's thought that trying to decode these letters could prove fatal if you aren't the one worthy to do so. There's over 7 billion people on the planet, so the odds that you're the one worthy one and won't die are pretty slim. Not the sort of odds that I'd want to take just to look at some strange medieval letters. Number 5 on this list is the Treaties of the Vessels. The year is 1981. Harrison Ford has already taken the big screen a few times, but is he a leading actor? Yes, Raiders of the Lost Ark takes to the screen and the beautiful George Lucas and Steven Spielberg brainchild officially solidifies Harrison Ford as being an elite A-lister in Hollywood. Well, this beautiful brainchild of theirs didn't just come out of thin air, but it was very likely inspired by the treaties of the vessels. This text is said to talk about some priceless treasures from King Solomon along with the Ark of the Covenant. If found, these would be some of the most valuable things ever rediscovered in all of human history. When there's gold, people are going to come and this same thing applies here. There are riches galore to be found if someone is able to get to the bottom of this mystery and the secrets may be within the treaties of the vessels. The thing is, it doesn't tell you the exact location of the Ark, so our daring explorers will need to find out for themselves. In case you didn't know, the Ark of the Covenant is said to hold tablets containing the Ten Commandments. 
The rest of the treasure is described in the treaties as being 77 tables of gold and their gold was from the walls of the Garden of Eden that was revealed to Solomon. And they radiated like the radiance of the sun and moon which radiate at the height of the world. So yeah, it's all pretty freaking good stuff. Although, I don't know if y'all remember the end of Harrison Ford's massive breakout movie, but discovering the Ark of the Covenant may not be the best thing ever. In fact, it's said that touching the Ark of the Covenant will result in death by the hands of God. That's why some people think this whole thing is cursed. Yes, if you actually found this thing, then you might be the most wealthy person in the world, but it may also kill you in the process. You also may never find it at all and dedicate your life to nothing. I'd say that you can probably read this thing, just leave the exploring to our main man Indy. Number 4 on this list is the Voynich Manuscript. The Voynich Manuscript is definitely an interesting one, largely because no one has any idea what it's saying. This is a 250 page book where pretty much all of the words are in an unfamiliar language that we can't seem to decipher. The reason that people think this thing is inherently cursed isn't just because of the gibberish though, it's because of the pictures that go along with said gibberish. Cosmological symbols, weird plants doing weird things, and nude women doing some other weird things are all over this book. It should also be stated that the manner of the drawings are just plain creepy. Like there's nothing inherently evil or cursed about a plant or a naked woman, but the way that the book has drawn them out really does give me some serious devil vibes. Because of this, people worry that the book may be cursed. That potentially this is a book from the underworld which somehow made its way to our world. This is why we can't understand the words, but a demon would be able to pick it up no problem. Experts have researched the language and although they don't know what it is, have discovered some hallmarks that indicate it is a real language of some kind. Therefore, it could be some kind of demonic tongue that we aren't familiar with. Granted, it could also be some other ancient language that's just been lost in time. Demonic language or ancient language, I think based on the drawings, it's clear that whatever is said is probably not PG stuff. Who knows how many gruesome or questionable things this book has been part of in its lifetime. Considering you wouldn't be able to read it anyways, I'd just avoid it altogether. Number 3 on this list is the Handbook of Ritual Power. Anything called the Handbook of Ritual Power probably deserves to be on the list. Owen Jarrus details this book nicely by writing, This 20 page codex dates back around 1300 years and is written in Coptic. It contains a variety of magical spells and formulas including love spells, spells for curing black jaundice, and instructions on how to perform an exorcism. The text may have been written by a group of Sethians, an ancient Christian sect who held Seth, the third son of Adam and Eve, in high regard. The opening of the text references a mysterious figure named Bakhtiotha whose identity is unknown. I give thanks to you and I call upon you, the Bakhtiotha, the great one who is very untrustworthy, the one who is lord over the forty and the nine kinds of serpents, a translation of the text reads. The researchers who translated and analyzed the text call it a handbook of ritual power. It is now housed at the Museum of Ancient Cultures at Macquarie University in Sydney. The university purchased the codex in 1981 from a Vienna based antiquities dealer named Michael Fackelman, where Fackelman got it from is unknown. Spells, formulas, black jaundice, all of this sounds quite a lot like some of the other books that we've looked at in the first two parts of this series. A book that probably teaches humans some skills that we simply aren't ready to receive. A book that if it fell into the wrong hands, somebody with evil intentions, could prove to be really really bad. There are things that need to be left in the hands of higher beings and making somebody fall in love with someone else may just be one of them. Keep this book locked up and away from prying eyes. Number 2 on this list is the Dresden Codex. Owen Jarrus details once again the Dresden Codex beautifully by writing, The Dresden Codex is a Mayan text dating back around 800 years. It contains 39 beautifully illustrated sheets with texts and images on both sides. 
Research published in 2016 in the Journal of Astronomy and Culture indicates that the codex records the phases of the planet Venus so that the Maya would be certain that their ceremonial events were being held on the correct day. The Maya had a really elaborate ritual set of events that were tied to the calendar. Study researcher Geraldo Aldana, a science historian at the University of California, Santa Barbara, told Live Science. They were probably doing large scale ritual activities connected to the different phases of Venus. Now, for those who don't know, Venus, albeit a very beautiful planet, is often tied to Lucifer. It should also be noted that the Mayans were known to perform the occasional human sacrifice, and I don't think it's a stretch to say that this text most likely contains dates when human sacrifices are to be performed. The Dresden Codex would have acted as an agenda to make sure that our Mayans kept on track with their sacrificial rituals to honor Venus. For this reason, it's thought that this codex is cursed with the souls of those who were sacrificed. It's also very dangerous to perform any of these rituals as they will likely involve the loss of human life and potentially reaching out to some very dangerous gods. This is the oldest surviving Maya book and for that reason needs to be kept around for research, but I wouldn't recommend the average person giving it a read. And finally, number one on this list is Liber Linatus. This text is currently considered to be the longest lasting Etruscan text in all of history. It dates back to the 3rd century BCE, and because not much is known about the Etruscan language, it remains mostly untranslated. However, experts who study such things have been able to decipher some of it and have discovered that the text was a ritual calendar. A collection of dates with specific rituals to be performed on said dates. The exact details of these rituals are unknown, but we assume them to be centered around human sacrifices and things of that nature. This is already enough to fear this book, but what makes it inherently cursed is how the pages were used for several thousand years. Mihailo Beric was a low-ranking Croatian official who, in 1848, decided to leave his position and travel to Egypt. While he was there, he decided to purchase a sarcophagus with a mummy inside. Why someone would want a coffin with a preserved dead body in it is beyond me, but apparently this was pretty cool to own back then. Anyways, he takes this mummy back to his home in Vienna and stands it upright in the corner of one of his rooms. It wasn't until after he died though and his brother donated the mummy to the State Institute of Croatia that somebody realized what the mummy was covered with. The bandages that preserved the mummy were covered in writing. These bandages were the Liber Linatus and had been used as rags for this mummy for centuries. Now this text is locked in a refrigerated room in the Archaeological Museum of Croatia and for good reason. Not only is the writing of this text potentially very dangerous, but people believe that the spirit of this dead mummy haunts the rags and that they're cursed. Those that come into contact with them, or God forbid read them, could have some very tragic events befall them. For this reason, I highly recommend staying away from the Liber Linatus at all costs. Number 5 on this list is Long Lost Friend. This book is really interesting because even though there are multiple copies around the world, there's only one particular copy that has a serious curse to it. The book itself was written in 1820 by John George Homan and is basically a collection of spells and other folk remedies that would be very useful if you were running a farm. A lot of the content in the book has to do with healing livestock and casting a spell to have better yields come the harvest. One copy of this book though was pretty much directly responsible for the murder of its Owner. Orin Gray writes, While the book itself is intended to be benign, containing, as it does, wonderful and well-tested remedies and arts for men as well for livestock according to its original German title, the tome took on a rather sinister reputation following the so-called Hex Hollow murder committed by John Blimer, John Curry, and Wilbert Hess. The three men broke into the home of their neighbor, Nelson Raymer, because they said he'd put a curse on them and they were trying to find his copy of The Long Lost Friend and destroy it in order to end their affliction. Unable to do so, they instead killed Raymer and attempted to burn down his house. Raymer's supposed copy of the book never turned up. After this incident had happened, the men sort of came to their senses and it felt to them as if they'd been under a spell and lost their minds for a little while. People have theorized that the single copy of the long lost friend that Nelson Raymer had owned was cursed and through its curse had basically set this tragic event in motion. Similar to the One Ring in Lord of the Rings, after it sabotaged its owner, it went into 
hiding and now no one knows where this book went. Hopefully it stays hidden and the curse it holds is never brought to the light again. Number four on this list is the orphan story. The orphan story is one of the few entries on this list where the subject matter isn't too demonic or troubling in nature. It's, as the title would suggest, a story about an orphan who at 14 years old leaves Spain to go on some adventures. The curse with this book seems to be when someone studies it. The story was written by Martin de Leon Cardenas in the early 1600s and since then has racked up the death toll for those who have worked on the book. A Peruvian academic, Belinda Palacios, has said, I laughed it off but I was a bit apprehensive at the same time. It's taken a while because the people who have worked on it have died, one from a strange disease, one in a car accident, and another of something else. A book that if you spend extensive time with it will inevitably lead to your death. No one knows where this curse originally started from. Potentially the author had written something into the book where if somebody spends a long time with the work, they'll eventually suffer a grim fate. Or potentially through the years of its publication, the book has had something sinister happen to it that then caused those who worked on it to suffer greatly. I find it very interesting that this curse only seems to apply to those that study or put great effort into the book. From what I've read, those who just simply read the book for pleasure will be fine. That being said, any book that has the potential to curse me with death is something that I'd like to keep off my reading list. Number three on this list is Tomino's Hell. Tomino's Hell is one of the most famous works from the Japanese poet Sajo Yaso, but it's famous for all the wrong reasons. It's not actually a book, so I'm leaving the parameters of this video a little bit, but it is a one-page poem that has dire consequences if read aloud. It was initially released in 1919 and started to gain some popularity because those who read it felt very troubled and uneasy when doing so. The poem's subject matter is very disturbing and graphic, and it's understandable why it would make somebody feel uneasy. It's about a child named Tomino who lived amongst abusive parents and decided to write all of her sorrows into a poem. That poem is found by her parents and they respond by locking her up in a cage and not feeding her. Eventually she dies from disease and malnourishment. So the poem itself is pretty bloody depressing to begin with. Throw on the fact that when you read it out loud you actually get cursed and now we have one of the most dangerous pieces of writing in the world. Tomino's Hell, if you read out the poem in its entirety out loud, is said to curse you forever. The curse ranges in severity and can come in the form of almost anything. Illness, financial ruin, accidents, death of a loved one, or even death of yourself are all in the potential cards for what might happen if you read this poem out loud. One of the most famous instances of this is filmmaker Suji Teriyama, who made a movie based on the poem and then shortly died soon afterwards due to illness. There have been countless others who have suffered similar fates after reading this poem as well. I've actually avoided reading the poem even silently while I was doing this entry and just read people's descriptions on it. For your safety and your your family's safety, I recommend that you avoid it as well. Number two on this list is Codex Gigas. This book is often referred to as the Devil's Bible and anything that's called that has to make this list. It's one of the strangest books in the world because even though it's only 320 pages in length, it actually weighs roughly 160 pounds. The origin behind this dark book is widely debated but the most popular legend includes a Buddhist monk. It's said that in the 16th century, a Buddhist monk broke a promise to his master and as a punishment he chose to lock himself in a room and have no food or no water. He spent days in that room writing 310 of the current 320 pages in the book. The last 10 he couldn't finish though, and instead of enlisting the help of someone from our world, he decided to get someone else to help. It was the devil. He called to Lucifer himself, and Lucifer answered his call. The monk died, but Lucifer finished the remaining 10 pages and left his devilish mark on the book forever. The book is now locked up in Vatican City for safekeeping, but it's said that somebody stole those last 10 pages written by the devil and nobody knows where they are now. What's written in those last 10 pages is also a bit of a mystery. The devil could have written horrible spells in there that could result in awful evil sweeping across the land. He may have also put a curse on those last 10 pages and those who read it will fall victim to whatever curse he decided to leave behind. Who knows how dangerous this book could actually be. Either way, if you ever stumble upon Codex Gigas, I don't recommend giving it a read. Number one on this list is the Grand Grand. Grimoire. The Grand Grimoire is considered by some to be the most dangerous book on the planet. The exact date this book was written is unknown, with some estimates putting its first publication in the early 1400s, but other experts saying that it was probably written some 500 years after that. The writer of this book is thought to be Antonio del Rabina, who, other than writing this grimoire, pretty much a complete mystery. The Key of Solomon and the Lesser Key of Solomon are often on people's most cursed books list, and much of the teachings in the Grand Grimoire was taken 
taken from those original texts. This book, The Grand Grimoire, serves only one evil purpose. It teaches someone how to summon and make a pact with the devil. Wikipedia writes, The work is divided into two books. The first book contains instructions for summoning a demon and for the construction of tools with which to force the demon to do one's bidding. The second book is further divided into two parts, The Sanctum Regnum and Secrets. The Sanctum Regnum contain instructions for making a pact with the demon, allowing one to command the spirit without the tools required in book one, but at greater risk. Secrets contain simpler spells and rituals one can employ after having performed the ritual in the first book. Some editions contain a short text between those two parts dealing with necromancy. The book describes several demons as well as the rituals to summon them in order to make a pact with them. It also details several spells for winning the lottery, talking to spirits, being loved by a girl, or making oneself invisible. This book is made to be an evil cheat code to life. Something that somebody can use to hack the game and get a leg up at everything. And don't get me wrong, winning the lottery would be a pretty cool superpower to have, but at what cost? How much of my soul am I going to have to sell to a demon to get that done? How do I know that I'm going to perform these spells properly? Like if I'm an amateur, then I could very easily screw something up and fatally injure myself in the process. Also, summoning the devil is never the best idea to begin with either. This book is just far too powerful and far too sinister for humans to have access to. Number five on this list is the untitled grimoires. The Untitled Grimoires were written by a witch and really not the type of book that you want to be reading before bedtime. Or actually reading it all for that matter. Digital Trends says, The Untitled Grimoires is a set of two handwritten spiral bound spell books sold by an online retailer for nearly $14,000 back in 2013. The books were handwritten in the 1960s by Persephone Adrasta Irene, a high priestess of Wicca who supposedly led her own coven. All 250 pages are filled with incantations, spells, enchantments, and details on how to summon spirits and demons. However, there is a serious catch. The seller warned buyers that any non-believers who messed with the books would bring a deadly curse upon themselves, while Persephone herself explicitly tells readers on the first page that proceeding with the book would have serious consequences. She wrote, To those not of the craft, the reading of this book is forbidden. Proceed no further, or justice will exact a swift and terrible retribution, and you will surely suffer at the hand of the craft. So, literally anyone who can't perform dark magic already, can't read this book and learn how to perform dark magic without dark magic coming and cursing them. Seems like a kind of a stupid way to get people to join your club, but I guess I'm not familiar with the ongoings of witches. Either way, there is no doubt that this book is deeply cursed. I can't imagine spending 14 grand on this thing unless you literally were already familiar with dark magic yourself and I guess then you could make use of the book, but that's not me. People who have tried to read this thing have had some horrible tragedies befall them, so I highly do not recommend it. Number 4 on this list is Pseudodomarchia de Mona. Wow, okay, that was an absolute freaking mouthful, so I'm not going to be calling it that anymore because it's also called the False Hierarchy of Demons, and I'm going to be saying that from here on out. Ancient Origins says, This is a great compendium from the 16th century dictating the names of 69 demons. The list initially appeared as an appendix to a book about demonology and witchcraft by Johann Weyer. The son of a civic service merchant, Johann Weyer, was a Dutch doctor and occult practitioner born in the Netherlands in 1515. Well versed in Latin from a young age, Ware quickly became a student of Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa, a famous magician, theologian, and occultist in Antwerp. It appears that Ware's fascination with magic began while working under Agrippa, but later escalated after he became a doctor in his own right. He was summoned to a particular fortune teller's court case and thereby asked by the judge for advice on the topic. The court case started his interest in researching the witchcraft way of life, culminating with his decision to attempt to defend those who were accused of practicing. 27 years after this case, when Weyer was 62 years old, he published The False Hierarchy of Demons. This book, as with most that study demons, also talks about how to summon and control these demons. This book also focuses a lot on witchcraft too, something that became a deep obsession for Weyer. Definitely a book that you should avoid, and one that could hold some serious curses. Number three on this list is the Ars Notoria. The Ars Notoria is an ancient text which grants the person who studies it a perfect memory. 
Something that sounds great from the outside, but it isn't as cool as it's cracked up to be. Ancient Origins writes, as part of a larger collection known as the Lesser Keys of Solomon, the Ars Notoria is a book that is said to allow followers a mastery of academia, giving them greater eloquence, a perfect memory, and wisdom. The Ars Notoria is one of five books within the Lesser Keys of Solomon, an anonymous text that was compiled from other works in the 17th century and focuses on demonology. The Ars Notoria is the oldest portion of the Lesser of the Keys grimoire dating back to the 13th century. However, the texts contained within are a collection of orations, prayers, and magical words which date back to well before the 1200s. The prayers are in several languages including Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. It was not a book of spells or potions, but a book of prayers and orations that are said to strengthen and focus one's mental powers by beseeching God for intellectual gifts. Among these intellectual gifts is the concept of a perfect memory. Those, those who practice liberal arts such as arithmetic, geometry, and philosophy are promised a mastery of their subject if they devote themselves to the Ars Notoria. Within, it describes a daily process of visualization, contemplation, and orations intended to enhance the practitioner's focus and memory. So here's the thing guys, that all sounds well and good and, and very useful, but I don't think that people understand what a perfect memory actually means. It means that there is literally nothing at any given point that you will ever forget. The license plate of that one car that cut you off. That one passing comment that the cashier said about the milk that you bought. The strange handshake that you had with your friend the other day. Literally nothing at all. You're not going to forget anything. Think about how much noise is going to be going on in your head at one given time if you can't forget anything. This is the curse of this book, and it's why a lot of people who have studied it in depth have lost their minds. If you're going to remember everything in the world, then there also needs to be a way to turn it off every now and again, to finally get some silence in your head. Sometimes forgetting things really is the best thing for us. Number two on this list is The Picatrix. The Picatrix is definitely a book that should be avoided, and it's mainly for how freaking grotesque it is. It was initially written in Arabic back in the 11th century, and it's a book that's centered around astrology and magic. It teaches the individuals who study it how to concoct crazy spells and make magical potions. What has thrust it into the limelight, as I mentioned earlier, is how freaking gross it is. The magical potions and the spells in here are just disgusting, and they're honestly plain wrong. Various body parts, various fluid from said body parts, and other weird stuff is regularly called upon in this text. The following is a literal passage from the book on how to make a spell. Take four ounces of the blood of a black dog, two ounces each of pig's blood and brains, and one ounce of donkey brains. Mix all of this together until well blended. When you give this medicine to someone in food or drink, he will hate you. And like, yeah, duh, if anyone blended up a bunch of brains and then gave it to me to drink, then I would kind of hate them as well. Many people think that this book is cursed based on the horrible spells in it, but it honestly might not be and could just be super weird. Either way, probably best to be avoided. In at number four, the book of the sacred magic of Abraham Mellon, the mage. The book of the sacred magic of Abraham Mellon, the mage, is a book of mystic arts written by Abraham for his son Lamech. It was a three part 15th century book. It was translated in the 1900s. Once translated, it developed a reputation for being cursed. Abraham wrote his book based on the idea that every person has their own unique personal demon. The book contains rituals to help the reader summon and control their demon. It is told that once you could do this, you could perform supernatural. Natural feats. It is said that if you own this book, you will also get the attached curse. Anyone with a copy in their possession will be haunted by spirits from another realm. People unlucky enough to own the book have had bad luck follow them, and some even met an early demise. It is said that the incantations that give you the ability to control your demon releases the curse and opens you up to demons from the other side. Fun stuff. And finally, in at number one, we have The Catcher in the Rye. The Catcher in the Rye is one of the most well known American books of the 20th century. It is often a required reading for most teens during high school. Despite this, the book has a dark past that often gets overlooked. It was written by J.D. Salinger and first published in 1951. The book is considered to perfectly capture the essence of adolescence. Throughout time and the changes in society, it is still relatable to teenagers' lives today. It reflects the true nature of being an adolescent, the rebellion, survival, and internal struggle 
struggles of growing up. It follows the story of a young man named Holden Caulfield. He has been kicked out of a number of schools and when the story picks up, he has been kicked out of his latest school. He does not want to tell his parents fearing the punishment that might follow. He runs away from home and starts his adventures in New York. At the time of its release, it was seen as controversial for using bad language and adult themes, but the author didn't want to censor the book. He wanted an accurate depiction. None of this is why the book is considered cursed though. The curse comes from the link the book has to murders. The list of crimes linked to the book is longer than you might expect, one of the most famous being the assassination of John Lennon. His killer sat and read the book until the police arrived. He then used the book to write and sign his confession. He later explained that after reading the book he wanted to save Lennon and maintain his innocence forever. This is not the only famous murder connected to the book. Robert Bardo took the life of actress Rebecca Schaefer and John Hinckley assassinated Ronald Reagan. Both were carrying copies of the book while committing their crimes. It is unknown why this curse turns people into killers or how this book became cursed. It appears that it has the power to turn certain readers into criminals. It seems that it does not have the ability to make everyone behave in the same way. Maybe if you read the book at a low point in your life, you'll be susceptible to the curse. So there is a chance you'll read the book and be fine, but there is a risk that it will intercept your mind with the dark thoughts. It seems to make the reader believe they need to cleanse the world. So if you do have to read this, please just be careful. Coming in at number two, we have The King in Yellow. The King in Yellow is a book of short stories. It was written by writer Robert W. Chambers and first published in 1895. The book was named after a play which has the same name and recurs as a motive throughout some of the stories. The first half of the book contains highly esteemed horror stories. It has been described as a classic in the field of supernatural. There are 10 stories included in the book. The first four mention the King in Yellow. The King in Yellow is said to be a forbidden play that drives those who read it into despair and madness. Although these short stories only speak of the forbidden play, it is said that if you were to find the original text, you may be driven mad. It was once performed for a mass audience. The cursed play lured the audience or reader in. By the time you get to the second act, the audience or reader have been driven completely insane. This is why the text is thought to have been destroyed and is forbidden to read. If you do think you have found it, then I warn you to not read it or you might just be driven mad yourself. I'm already mad, so I can read it. And finally, in at number one, we have The Sorrows of Young Werther. The Sorrows of Young Werther is a novel written by John Wolfgang von Goethe and published in 1774. Goethe was 24 at the time of writing the book and it took him only five and a half weeks of intense writing to finish. It instantly placed him among the foremost international literary celebrities and was among the best known of his work. The majority of the plot focuses on a young man's extreme response to unrequited love. The book had a big cultural impact. It was given the name Werther Fever. Young men throughout Europe began to dress in clothing described in the novel. The obsession started to go a little further than this. Young men started to copy the ending of the book where the main character takes his own life. Copies of the book were found with each copycat passing. Authorities all over Europe were concerned and didn't know what to do. They banned the wearing of the clothing from the book, hoping this would stop the copycats from taking inspiration from the text. It was labelled an epidemic and governments were desperate to stop the young men from passing. This led to a revision of the book in 1787. They gave the book a new ending, a happy ending in hopes of stopping any further pain. In the new ending, a friend learns of his plans to hurt himself and stops him. The young man then learns how to become a part of society and goes on to live his life. The original copy of the book was banned. It is said if you read it, even today, you will be cursed and driven mad to the point of copying the steps of the young Werther. The new version of the book stopped the epidemic and more books were given a happy ending to not cause such a disaster again. In at number four, we have Untitled Book of Spells. This untitled spell book was first known by the public in 2013. Two books were listed for sale online. The online seller was selling two mysterious handwritten and spiral bound spell books. The books were sold for a crazy $13,865. Once sold, the seller was sent a warning to the buyer saying, To those not of the craft, the reading of this book is forbidden. Proceed no further or justice will exact a swift and terrible retribution and you will surely suffer at the hand of the craft. The warning means that if you do not study witchcraft and you attempt to study or perform anything within the book, you will be cursed and will suffer. These spells were believed to have been written by high priestess of Wiccan named Persephone Adrasta Irene sometime in the early 1960s. It is believed that she ran her own coven, keeping to herself in an area that others avoided. It is believed that spellbook 
should always be burned after the witch who wrote them dies. The spells should not be used by anyone if not under the witch's supervision. The two books are believed to be reworkings of the original work by someone in the coven. They did not want the work to be lost so they reworked and created two copies of the spells. This is not something that should ever be done. They each contain vast collections of incantations, curses, spells and enchantments. There are instructions on how to summon spirits, demons and otherworldly entities, as well as instructions on exorcism in case something goes wrong during another spell. It is not currently known where the book is or if the buyer is alive or dead. Hopefully they are worthy to study the pieces, otherwise they may have cursed themselves. In at number 3 we have The Lesser Key of Solomon. The Lesser Key of Solomon is another book of spells. It is known as a cursed book of demonology. The author is unknown as is usually the case with cursed books. Some say it is compiled from various texts gathering information from the most powerful spell books. It was first found in the 17th century. Since then the book has been published and can even be found on Amazon. But think before you purchase, the book contains passages on how you could conjure the dead, demons or lost spirits. Once summoned it also tells how you can use these spirits for your own bidding. Ancient texts are often rumoured to be cursed, the same can be said for this one, with tragedy and bad luck following the book. This book, unlike the other spell books, includes unique spells that others don't often mention. For example, it includes how to make yourself invisible or locate missing items. There are recipes for love potions and even liquors of persuasion. It seems there is nothing that you could not achieve if you bought this book. This may be by design, promise those desperate for success or wanting something out of reach that they can have anything they want, all for a price of a book. You should get lots of sales. But this is definitely not a book that you should want to own. It is apparently so cursed that it will doom anyone who has it on their bookshelf. There have been claims of various hauntings surrounding the books. The pages of the book reportedly turn on their own if the book is left idle. Others noted the book flying across the room. There are also more concerning hauntings. People have heard demonic whisperings around the home after buying the book, while also seeing shadow creatures in the corner of their eyes. The good news is there is a way to break the curse if you have already welcomed it into your home. It has been claimed that the way to dispose of the book is to burn it to ashes. Once you dispose of the ashes you should be free of the curse, unless of course you use one of the spells wrong and something has backfired. And finally in at number 1 we have the Necronomicon. The Necronomicon book is said to be bound in human flesh and inked in blood. It is a book of nightmares containing the darkest curses. Roughly translated the title means an image of the law of the dead. It is said to even contain the power to resurrect the dead and summon ancient creatures. It is said that those who have read the book have turned insane or even died upon finishing the book. The story is that the book was written by Abdul Al Hazred and is over 1000 pages long. Obviously it is the most haunted, cursed and doomed book in the world. It has even made appearances in various horror films including Evil Dead and Friday the 13th. Of course not a lot is known about the particular curses due to those who have read them no longer being around. But what we do know is that the original texts have the power to end humanity. If anyone was to survive the reading or survive performing one of the curses, they may summon one of the old ones. The old ones are the ancient creatures who ran the world before humanity, creatures like Cthulhu who if awakened would destroy the earth before we could even think about stopping them. People who have been tempted to bring back their past loved ones have turned to the Necronomicon for answers, only to be driven mad the further into the book they read. The book does contain the power to bring back loved ones but you would have to survive losing your own mind and soul along the way. Most copies of the book were destroyed for obvious reasons, but not all of the contents are lost forever. If you're brave enough to read any of the dark curses inside, there is a copy located in Massachusetts Miskatonic University. Just be careful what you read into, it could be the last thing you ever do. 